distribute. That's our partnership with them. And what's nice also with Keep is because we'd like to introduce our products into the U.S., like our product called Anarchist Mountain, which is a THC infused beverage that we've created in Canada. Because we can't cross ship our products from Canada to the U.S., our relationship with Keep allows us to use their manufacturing facilities that they have in the U.S. And it allows us a nice distribution partnership with their distribution system in the U.S. as well. So it's a win-win situation on both sides. From MJ Bulls Media, it's the Raising Cannabis Capital Show. Today on Raising Cannabis Capital, we are joined by Marcello Leone, the CEO of BevCanna. Marcello, welcome to the show. Dan, thank you so much. Nice to be here. I'm really excited to have you on, and I know our listeners are going to be excited because today's show is about developing a sector that everyone can relate to, the infused beverage sector. And I, I want to get started by asking a question that's been on my mind, and I know it's been on our listeners' mind, is why is it taking so long for the infused beverage sector to gain traction? No, uh-huh, Good question. I think, you know what, I love to answer this one like this, Dan. I think we, we have to look at the whole industry a little bit as a whole, which is this federal legalization of cannabis is critical. And whether it's CBD, a derivative from, from cannabis, whether it's THC, et cetera, Canada, where we are based out of, we're federally legal. And that means you can only buy through the provinces, you can only buy through authorized dispensaries, et cetera. And creating this new category of cannabis that we're all now talking about 2.0 beverages edibles etc this is newer with the legalization the federal legalization with canada so now it's all starting the world we're still not even on first base dan we're still so early in this stage we i kind of refer to this industry as the end of prohibition of alcohol and look at all the decades from the end of prohibition and look how much alcohol distribution there is in the world today. And every year, how many new brands come out into the marketplace because people are consumers and they're used to it and familiar with the consumption method of beverages. Very familiar. It's still early because we need to be able to have more federal legalization. It needs to have be able to be readily available for more and more consumers. I think, Dan, we're just early days. Uh, we're not even on first base. We're looking for that federal legalization in the United States. The, the, the Safe Banking Act has is, is got to now get, a, get approved by the Senate committee. We're still, even though it's been around for many years in Colorado, California, in Canada, et cetera, now we're talking about taking this plant and making it federally legal globally. And wow, what are the next three to four to five years going to look like? It's going to be great. But I think we're just in the early days with infused beverages. I think that the, the utilization of cannabis is becoming more and more mainstream. And I think the one category in, in North America that we're starting to see that's gaining traction are beverages. And I think people would like to be able to have the onset of what cannabis can do for you or CBD and not have to have carcinogenic smoking and having those potential risks to you when you do smoke. That's where we are in the cycle. Then I think, again, we have not hit first base. I think once we have more distribution in North America and readily available CBD distribution in major national stores, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, I think the consumption is going to be massive. Uh, I, I couldn't agree with you more. I think that it's a known method of, of consumption yeah. and it's built into our social lives and everything else. I think when you get it ready, there's definitely going to be a demand for it. Now I see you manufacture your brands, but yeah. you also have a white label division. Can you tell us a little bit more about your white label division? Sure. We have a state-of-the-art bottling facility up in the Soyuz, British Columbia, which is equivalent to your Napa Valley down in California. Okay. So our Soyuz is where they grow beautiful grapes and there's beautiful wineries, etc. And we have our own aquifer as well. So we have our own water that is untouched by man, which is very important. You need the water when you're infusing beverages. And we have a state-of-the-art bottling facility that can produce 200 million bottles per annum. There's not a lot of companies out there that are offering you, Dan, if tomorrow you came and you said, I'm Dan, and I've got Dan's beautiful CBD infused beverage, and I want to get that product out into the marketplace. 
yet I don't have a bottling facility. We offer that white label solution that we can cater to uh, entrepreneurs that are starting in the industry that need to develop product. We can offer a beautiful option to say, by the way, Dan, what are you going to be utilizing? You've you created this formulation. We can help you with that formulation. What kind of form factor would you like? We offer aluminum, glass, RPET, plastic, et cetera, shots, different sizes. And that takes the burden off a lot of these entrepreneurs that are coming into the industry and starting to build brands, but they don't have the facilities and then if you wanted to go to a big major, Molson's or a Constellation or a Hexo, somebody that's big in the field for beverages, they're busy doing their own beverages. They're not going to slow down those production facilities and bottling lines for smaller runs. And what's beautiful about what we do, we can service a big run and we can service also smaller runs as well. So it's the demand for white label is actually quite interesting and the phone doesn't stop. So it's a nice model. We're, yes. we're happy with it. I definitely th- see that as a huge in-demand service. Who can invest in the bottling facility? There's a barrier to entry. They can't overcome it. So they need p- people like you. And I see that you recently signed an exclusive manufacturing and distribution deal with Keith Brands out of the U.S., which is very exciting. We, we have a really great relationship with Keith. Keith is the number one brand in the U.S. with volume and dollars sold. Chief has eight of the top 10 beverages in the state of Colorado and two of the top 10 in California. They're the leader in the U.S. Again, imagine what that's going to look like in the United States in the next five years, six, seven, eight years as, as legalization gets more relaxed. And once again, it's going to get more relaxed, it's going to get federal legalization. We're relaxed meaning by federal legalization, but The systems and the criteria and the compliance is going to be strict, which is great for the end consumer as well. So you know that you're buying products that are great. And then what we did with Keefe was Keefe wants to come up to Canada. Between Canada and the United States, the way the the laws work today, you can't ship product from the U.S. up to Canada that's infused with cannabis. And you can't ship product from Canada that's infused with cannabis down to the United States. Okay. Okay. So it doesn't matter what company. It doesn't matter how big or how small. That's just the way the law is because of federal non-legalization in the United States. Mm -hmm. So we manufacture all Keef beverages for Canada and we distribute all Keef beverages for Keef in Canada as well. So anything you touch across Canada, if you want to buy the United States leading number one beverage Keef, we manufacture and we distribute. That's our partnership with them. And what's nice also with Keef is because We'd like to introduce our products into the U.S., like our product called Anarchist Mountain, which is a THC-infused beverage that we've created in Canada. Because we can't cross-ship our products from Canada to the U.S., our relationship with Keefe allows us to use their manufacturing facilities that they have in the U.S., and it allows us a nice distribution partnership with their distribution system in the U.S. as well. So it's a win-win situation on both sides. PodConnects is proud to announce our latest free feature that connects cannabis guests with cannabis podcasts. Being a guest on a podcast is a great way to build your brand, and now it's never been simpler to schedule an interview. Here's how easy it is to be a guest on one of our over 300 cannabis or hemp podcasts. Go to podconnects.com, select a podcast, and hit apply. We'll take care of sending your request to the podcast, and we'll help book the interview. So what are you waiting for? Go to podconnects.com, that's P-O-D-C-O-N-X.com, and start applying today. You're positioning yourself for when it is possible. You'll be the Lobats or the Molsons. Yeah, we don't know where compliance goes, but if we know that alcohol can cross all borders, etc., then it's just a matter of time, I believe, for the cannabis plant to be able to comply, and it just needs more federal legalization globally. I, I see that you're a publicly traded company yes. and uh, for our listeners are all excited about looking for opportunities to invest in publicly traded companies. For the larger investors, are there going to be other opportunities down the road maybe? We are so early days in our business. We are so excited about the next 12 months and the end of this fiscal year. We're really excited about 2022. There's a lot of growth for our company. There's been a lot of excitement with our company as well. The symbol on the stock in Canada is BEV under BEV. And then the other symbol in the US is BVNF. I look at it like this. If you're, if you want to be exposed to the space and your outlook is, is the next 12 to 18 months, 
then you're well positioned with with a company like ours because we're just getting on going and we're really excited about that. Unfortunately, the business and the public markets, you need that correlation to get more in line with each other and that takes time. Like I said, you've created a gigantic moat around your sector because it's hard to build a facility that can pump out as many bottles at, at a time, plus that infrastructure. And why do it? Just private label, do a white label with you and guys. And the licensing. Just oh, the there. licensing. Yeah. The, there. Can you imagine? You're compliant. You've got to have all the people and the staff in place. You've got to spend the money. You've got to sit and wait. And... Hopefully in two years, you're going to get your license. That's why I think that this is a really good opportunity for people that, you know, want to get in on this sector. Now's the time. I'll have all of Bev Canna's information in the show notes, including the stock symbol. So if you missed them earlier, you can grab them right off the show notes. We come from the entrepreneurial spirit. So we do our best to get back to everybody. And we want to make sure that the success is there for our our shareholders, our company, our employees. This is a journey. It's not a, a sprint. Yeah. Marcelo, I'm really excited for you. I appreciate you being on the show today. Thank you. Dan, I appreciate you inviting us to come back anytime. You're a gentleman. Thank you so much. 